Hi, welcome to another video in the video series by Horizon. In this video, we're going to take a look at specifically at this space management console. We're going to take a look at where it's located, as well as how to use that new console that's available to you. In this video, we're going to be focusing on particularly the non-transaction based uh, space inside of Archibus, as well as the environment we're going to take a look at is the version 22.1 Web Central product. So let's flip over into our environment and let's go take a look at that space management console. All right, there we go. So I flipped over into my environment. I've got a Web Central environment that I'm logged into at this point in time, and we're going to take a look at that console. First thing we want to do is find the console. So where is it located? So if we go into actually uh, the space planning and management section, inside the space inventory and performance, inside the space manager. It's actually located inside of two spots. One, it's located in the space manager and there's a space console available to you here. Also as well, it's also in the personnel section. So if you actually go back up the tree and you actually go into the personnel and occupancy section underneath space and planning, and go to that manager section, there's also the space console here. Whichever one you use, it still calls that space console. Uh, it's the same file. There's not really any differences between one versus the other. Uh, so again, you can use either mechanism uh, in order to call those up. So again, I'm just going to click on the hyperlink here. Once you click on the hyperlink, be patient. It's loading a lot of information at the, this point in time, uh, and it does come up at the, uh, once it's complete. I usually personally try to slide the process navigator if you're using the process navigator out of the way. This gives you a little more, little more uh, real estate on the page, and therefore now I get a full screen on the space console. So what is the space console before I start, start showing uh, my way around uh, the console? Well, essentially the space console allows you to, to do all your space management and all your occupancy or employee management uh, inside of one screen. And what this allows you to do is stop you from jumping from one screen to another to another. Uh, if you think about other parts of the space uh, aspects or the personnel aspects, you had to jump from one location to another just to update the information concerning a room. Uh, or maybe you're being able to do multiple assignments. Whereas the space console, it's all in one screen. It's almost a one-stop shop for space management. Inside of here, we can do all sorts of things such as calling up your floor plan drawings, highlighting those floor plan drawings. We can call up room information, organizational information, categories, uh, and the actual rooms themselves. We can also do printing from here, which is large, capable of a large capacity of printing, uh, lots of options on printing inside of here, as well as exporting. Uh, so export capabilities uh, from the console as well. So again, uh, those are just uh, some of the attributes in which you can do from the console. Console. What we're going to do is we're going to showcase uh, a couple of those different attributes. I'm going to step th you through how to use this console uh, on a very high level, uh, and then you can go in and start playing with it yourself. So let's take a look at the console itself. Starting at the top, there's actually two tabs across the top. There's the space tab and the occupancy tab. The space tab essentially allows you to track your spatial information and the occupancy, your personnel uh, information. I'm going to start with the space and then we'll flip to the occupancy once we get through the space tab. Inside the space tab, you'll notice that uh, very at the very top, there's two panels. We've got a filter console across the top, and we actually have our list of our floors down inside the second panel. So again, I'm just going to drag these separators out. There are uh, iframe separators in each one of these. So again, the same rules apply to any of the other iframes. You can drag and drop it uh, so that you can actually uh, navigate or be able to move your screen space a little bit bigger or smaller based on those drag and drop capabilities. So use those to your advantage. Starting at the very top, we'll start with a filter. There is a filter in we w which we want to be able to filter for our information which we're looking for. With that being said, there's some basic uh, filter criteria, some basic fil fields. So if for a particular, you're looking for a particular division or department, just like other filters inside of Archibus, you can come and be able to fill that out. So I've got, again, any that are select uh, values, dialog boxes will pop up. You can uh, be able to pick. I'm going to pick human resources in this example. Maybe I'm looking for human resources in a particular department or division on a particular floor or building. Fill the information out, and then you hit the big orange filter button. And what that will do is anytime you're interacting with Huron in on that space console, it restricts it to just information about that HR uh, di a division. Again, that might be a good example. 
or you want to clear it out, hit the clear button inside of here, and you want to reset it to something else, maybe like a building, fill out your building information, filter it, and it filters everything down below. So it does filter the, the floor list down below, as well as these tabs down below in the very bottom. So essentially, the filter is narrowing what you're looking at. If you're looking for more fields inside the filter, there is a more button inside there where you can expand out. Uh, so you have all sorts of other criteria in which you can fill out as well. Again, this is just expanding out that filter. You're going to fill out your criteria, hit that filter button. If you want to hide those fields, hit the less button and therefore slides them out of the way. Now, before I go down in the actual uh, f uh, floor list, if you look at the top, there's a couple of buttons across the top. Let's take a look at those. First one is the Recent button. You'll notice that as I click on that Recent button, it'll actually go back through previous restrictions in which you have set. So if you're just flipping from one organization to another, you can actually flip through those different uh, restrictions in which you've already set. So here if I go back, right now it's set for headquarters, if I go back to human resources, it'll actually flip my filter restriction to my previous restriction, and then I can flip it back if I want to by clicking on the recent button. That's really nice, especially if you're jumping from one criteria to another, and you're just comparing data and you want to flip really quickly, that's a great tool in order to do that. Next one is the Add New. Uh, you'll notice that there is Add New buttons all the way across the product. We'll talk to, uh, I'll talk to this a little bit at the end of the session. But essentially what you have the capability of doing is the option in order to add new information, such as the building and floor. If I click on the Add New, essentially it'll come up with the Buildings uh, Edit screen. So this is your basic Buildings Edit screen. I have the capability of adding a new building code, filling out the form, Edit form inside of here, saving it at this point in time. So uh, you do have the capability of adding brand new lookup data inside of here. This can be restricted via security groups. If you want to turn that button off or gray it out, uh, there are security groups attached to any of those add new functionality. Uh, and again, I'll reiterate that at the end of the session. All right, so be able to cancel that out right now, and you can add the floor as well. So building and floor capabilities, you can add them here. If you just acquired a new building, you can come in the console and be able to add it in the console if you want to uh, and use that functionality. Other buttons you're going to see, so here at the very top, uh, export uh, button. So here we've got an export button. This locations panel is actually one entire panel here, uh, so therefore that's what this button is used for. The first button is essentially an export button. You'll see those all across the product. There's one here, there's one down there, there's one up there. That icon, as you click on it, allows you to be able to export the information to a Word file or to an Excel file. So if you wanted to take whatever f you filtered on in your filter list and your, your floors that you have down below, you can export them into Excel or to a Word file. And that does it just for that panel, which is really nice, uh, and that's what that controls. Another item, uh, which is the little gear, and you're going to see the little gear, uh, again, same sort of spots in each one of the different panels. Uh, there is a select fields uh, dialog uh, inside of here option. Uh, select fields is very uh, handy inside of here. It's one of the few spots that you can actually control fields and what you want to see. So if we take a look down here, we've got essentially a floor list that we've restricted on, and therefore that floor list is a representation of what floors you have and particular fields of information. And what you can actually do is you can control these fields of information that you have to the left of those floors by the Select Fields button. So let's try that. So I can click on Select Fields, comes up with a Select Fields dialog box. So here, for example, you can see right now, Building Floor, Room Area, Capacity, Occupancy, and Room Count is the list of fields I have here. If I want to add something like, for example, rentable, I want to know the rentable of that floor. I can add it in. I can also move it up into the list if I want to. I can move it right beside room area, reorder it with the up and down buttons, and then click update. And once you do that, it's now added rentable area into that uh, available list. This select fields functionality is specific to users, which means that you can set it for your user settings uh, that you see fit and, and that uh, you have a requirement for, or turn items off that you don't use or, or that are all zeroed out. Um, and then next time you'll be able to log back into the Space Console, it remembers that as a user, and therefore you don't have to set it every time, So, which is a really nice feature. Uh, so again, select fields, personable, uh, uh, criteria that allows you to control those fields capabilities on a user-by-user -user basis. 
Next one down below, this is actually dealing with our actual panels down below. We have actually have uh, some asset, and we call them asset uh, tabs down below. And those asset tabs you can actually control. There's actually one off to the side that's actually hidden. And the functionality of showroom standards allows to turn that extra uh, panel on. So again, some clients use room standards, some clients don't. Uh, if you want to just turn it off, you can leave it off. Or if you want to turn it on, again, that little gear controls that functionality. Alright, let's start taking a look at the actual floor list itself. Uh, so we've got the basic floor list here. Uh, if we want to be able to interact with that floor or be able to see a floor plan of that floor, we can actually just come inside of here and be able to check mark on a floor. So I can actually take a floor, check mark it on, and as I use these check marks inside of here, it'll load that floor plan over on the right hand side. So again, these floor plans must be published into our flash format uh, from your AutoCAD drawings. If you want to be able to turn more than one floor on, you can do so. So you can come up and be able to turn one, two, three floors on as you see fit, uh, and turn many floors on at the same time. Again, it's really nice if you have a meeting uh, and you want to get the floors or do a comparison report uh, from one floor to another uh, and be able to load those floor plans. So that's the idea behind it. So I'm just going to load one floor just so that we have a nice clean floor that we can start working with uh, and be able to show you some of the functionality. So as I have that one floor, you'll notice down below, the, we've got the organizations, categories, rooms, and room standard. So therefore, as I come down to those different assets, essentially you've got the assets tabs, uh, include, and be able to click on some of these asset tabs, I get a list of organizations, let's say. So this will be our division and our department list for our filtered criteria. So you'll notice right off the bat it says restricted to HQ because we've set the HQ restriction in our filter. So this will pass it down into our different asset tabs that we have down below and be able to pass that restriction in. Now there's a couple different things you can do inside of these different tabs. Uh, so let's start out with what exists uh, in the list. So we've got a list. Here's essentially electronic system engineering that is in the HQ uh, uh, facility. There's a little air, a little triangle. As we click on the triangle, it expands it out. So if you have any child values inside of here, uh, you can actually come and be able to expand them out and see those child values. I had, I don't have. I just have one to one inside of here. So if you had many to one, uh, you would see those many. If I want, look, want to look for a very particular um, criteria, so maybe I'm looking for a particular group. Uh, so here, for example, maybe this bright green, I want to isolate that for a presentation. I can quite easily do that just by clicking on the actual value itself, and it highlights that area on the floor. So those rooms on the floor get highlighted with the color that's been assigned to that uh, executive group in this example, uh, and be able to to highlight them. If you want to remove that highlight, quite simply click a second time and it puts back whatever the, the previous highlight was in place. So again, selectable, each one of these tabs are selectable criteria. As you select it, it does interact with the drawing. So that's really nice. You'll notice there's also two buttons over on the right hand side, the assign button and the edit button. Assign is I want to be able to assign a room to this organization. So here, for example, over off to the side, if I notice that I've got a workstation, that workstation should be part of the executive group and it's not, uh, I can be able to assign it. So I can come over here and say, you know what, that should be green, and therefore I can hit the assign button, and then therefore be able to click on the room that I want to be able to assign to, and then commit to that. So the assign functionality allows me to do edit capability of that room via the drawing by clicking on the assign. It does confirm, give you confirmation at the top in case you accidentally clicked, clicked the wrong room. If you did, you just click on the room a second time and it deselects that room and then click on the, the appropriate room. So again, you can pick what room you want and then you commit it at that point in time. So I'm going to hit commit here in the very top. Once I've done that, it does change it automatically right away, goes into the rooms table and makes a change right away into that rooms table. So again, just a visual capability of making that alteration to your rooms table on the drawing really quickly. Another thing you can do inside of here is the edit button. The edit button will actually edit the root table. The root table in organizations is division and departments, so the DP and DV tables. So if we want to make a change, i.e. there's a spelling mistake or something like that, I can actually use this little pencil, 
click on the pencil itself, pops up with the edit dialog box, and then I can go and make the change. So if you do have that uh, change that you want to make, just put the value inside there, save it, and therefore it goes and makes that change. So therefore I can see that change uh, as it's been made. If you go and you do that change, again, same rule as the thumb inside the Archibus product is it does a cascading update as well, uh, as well as you'll notice there's also a delete functionality here as well. So again, does a cascading delete uh, across the product. So be careful with that. Uh, make sure that uh, whoever has access to that button uh, has the, the uh, knowledge that they're going to could possibly affect another business process. All right, so with that being said, there's also three buttons across the top on each one of these different tabs. Add new capability. Again, this may be grayed out on your environment when you get back to your desk. It is security based. If I want to add a brand new division, quite simply add it. Fill out your dialog box that you have. This is just a basic add uh, dialog box and hit save. Once you do that, it adds it in and then you can use the assign function in order to assign it to your uh, corresponding rooms. Well, that's a very powerful little button. Again, I never had to leave the screen in order to add new divisions and new departments. Export, uh, there's an export to uh, Word and export to Excel. This will only export this corresponding tab that I'm currently on. Uh, so therefore, just keep that in mind. If I really like these numbers, it's a nice summary. Uh, and therefore, uh, I want to be able to export that to Excel, maybe pass it via email to somebody. That's a great tool in order to use that for. Lastly is select fields. Again, same sort of criteria. I can come and add a field. There's not too many fields that you're going to add in organizations, categories, or standards, uh, but you could if you want to. It's maybe more applicable for the rooms table uh, when we get into the rooms. But that's the idea is select fields. So as I be able to flip from one tab to another, uh, before I do, you've got the restrict to HQ. If you wanted to see the full list, you can actually uncheck that, and that is actually every single organization in uh, your entire portfolio uh, that you can have access to. Uh, again, uh, I usually leave that check marked on because it's going to be relative based on what you're looking at on the screen. So uh, again, may or may not be applicable based on your uh, requirement. Room categories. You'll notice I uh, have the selectable capability of flipping from one tab to another, so one type of asset to another. Room categories is just the second one. Again, category and type is the uh, hierarchy inside of here. So again, meeting rooms, offices, and so on and so forth. So you've got the parent as being your category, your child as being your type. If, for example, I'm just looking for all the offices, I can click on office, and therefore it'll uh, highlight them for me. I can click off that office, and therefore it'll restrict it or not restrict it based on that criteria. That's a nice feature to have. Again, I can do the assign inside of here and edit the line item right here. I can add a new category and type right from this screen, export to Doc in Excel, and select my field. So same criteria that we had in organizations, just changes the asset type to categories. Rinse and repeat for room standard. Again, list of room standards that we have inside of here, edit capability inside of here, add new, add a new room standard here as well, uh, export, and uh, select fields here. So again, same sort of criteria. Lastly but not least is the rooms. Uh, so in the rooms, uh, you, if we're looking for a particular room, uh, you can just select on that, where's room 124? I don't know. Uh, I can actually click on that uh, and it'll actually highlight what room that we're actually looking for. So it zooms into that corresponding room in which we're looking for uh, and be able to select that and it highlights it for us. Other aspects in which we can do inside of the rooms table, uh, we can actually edit that room directly right from here. So here, for example, I can hit the edit button. I get full edit of that rooms table uh, to alter any of that information with the raw data. So if you're not uh, dealing with the assign functionality, you just want to change the raw data. It's a nice quick way in order to get to that. So again, a little, the little um, a pencil, uh, which allows you to do that. Add new. I can add a new, uh, brand new room from here uh, if I wanted to. So if you wanted to, you can come inside of here, fill out the form, hit save. It's just your basic edit form for a room uh, and be able to do that. Now, uh, in order to get the uh, highlights turned off again, I typically just hit the filter button again and it just kind of clears that highlight out there for you. So again, you can turn on and off whatever fields of information that you want. So here I'm going to have that 18th floor on uh, and be able to um, dictate that. So 18th floor uh, and be able to deal with that. Once I have my 18th floor open, you'll notice the highlights are being turned on and off. There's different highlights. Maybe it loads based on where it loads off the, uh, the basic loading of the space console, but you have control as a user on what highlights you see or what highlights you have capabilities on when that drawing loads. 
So if we look at the top, at the very top, some of the capabilities that we have inside of here is we can control those highlights. So what highlights do we want to see? So right now I don't have any highlights on. And I can actually go in and change those or pick from the list of what highlight I want to turn on. So maybe I'm highlighting by category. I'm looking for all the offices and I want to be able to control what that color codes are going to be. So you can choose that color code or that highlight, thematic highlight that you want uh, and it'll highlight for you. If you're wondering what the colors are going to re be representative of, there's two ways of doing that. One, you can either go to the room category and look at the legend inside of here, or there is a legend pull down right next to the actual highlight pull down. So again, there's a little down arrow. As I click on that down arrow, it gives me a, a legend. I can drag and drop that legend and be able to resize it too. So if I'm making a nice PowerPoint, uh, you can really play with that and, and put it in the right spot. So again, uh, I can represent the color representation of what that uh, colors represent uh, and be able to have a corresponding legend. So again, you can close that legend by hitting on the close uh, and it closes it down. Another thing you can do is you can actually highlight by border as well as uh, uh, the room highlights. So the first one is room highlights, the second one is the outside of the room. So that polyline or that line that depicts that room, you can actually switch the color of that if you wanted to. So you can come inside of here, uh, change that up. So maybe I want to be able to highlight by uh, division as well. Uh, again, not a very good contrast. Let's see if we can find a better contrast here. There we go. So again, types, maybe you inside is by category, outside is by type. So here you can see I have the green and then inside I have the blue. So you can actually highlight by two criteria, which is really nice. Uh, so one is the representation of the category, one's the representation of the type and you have control over that. So if you want to be able to specify that, maybe you're looking at room standards or divisions and departments and you want to have two highlights at the same time, it just thickens up that border, get border gives it a color and it has the representation of the reference with a legend just to the right of that and you can use that down arrow for that. So that's a nice feature. Again, two highlight capabilities uh, or just flat out turn it off by hitting on the none and turning it off. Last but not least is labels. Uh, label capabilities inside of here. You can actually drop in different label sets if you want to. So if you want to take a look at, uh, we've got room categories turned on right now and you want the text for room categories, it'll drop in that text for you. Or maybe the highlight colors are pretty self-explanatory and you want to drop a different piece of text in. Maybe you want the divisions. You can come and be able to drop that piece of text in there. Now again, if that text is um, is sensitive to the area on the screen. So if you wanted to see that text, we could always just zoom in a little bit and you can see it drops that text in based on my uh, zoom uh, level that I'm zoomed in or not zoomed in as. Okay. So as you can see, different label capabilities inside of here, uh, different preset ones, which are really nice. If you want something real simple, like just a rim number and that's it, uh, it drops that in accordingly. So again, uh, capabilities and controlling our uh, drawings. You notice that we do have the uh, capability of being able to zoom in, zoom out, and all the different controls, uh, flash drawing controls uh, that are available to you as well. Uh, so you can zoom in and zoom out on your drawings. They are vector-based, so you can zoom in and continuously zoom in without worrying about pixelation, uh, which is really nice. At the very top, uh, one of the things we have the capability of doing here is we've got the little gear. In the little gear, you can actually have two different options inside of here. Plan types. Plan types could be a preset plan in which you want to take a look at. So maybe you have a preset department uh, plan. So I'm going to try that one here, save that. And therefore, what it will do is it will pick the right highlight for you, the right text type for you, and be able to configure your drawing based on that plan type. So therefore, you can control which plan types that you have out of the box. Background uh, background button allows you to change the background image. Uh, so for example, maybe you have a different image uh, that you want to swap out. So a lot of clients ask about that where they want to be able to have, for example, maybe a uh, basic uh, architecture one that has everything inside of it, maybe all your furniture, all your doors, your windows, everything like that. And then maybe another one like an emergency plan without all the furniture and just something very, very simplistic. So you can come inside of here and flip those background imagery out uh, to something different just by clicking on the other value. So I'm going to pick on emergency. As you, th as you can see, three different levels. These are all controlled uh, via your layers in AutoCAD when you go to publish in, in the AutoCAD drawing. So I'll swap that out, save it. And what that will do is it will swap out the image for something that may be simpler or more complex based on what you have 
um, published at that point in time. So again, this one uh, is a little more simpler in nature uh, versus the more complex architecture one. So that's what the, the background imagery do, just swaps out your, uh, your background uh, reference uh, image. Next is uh, being able to export. Inside of this dialog box, there's a lot more features that are available to you than the other ones. The other ones just had the docx and the, uh, the Excel buttons uh, export capability. Here we have a couple of extras. So let's start with a simpler one. What you see is what you get. Uh, essentially what that does is if you're zoomed in and you want to export it out to a Word file, so we get constant uh, questions about that. So let's try that. So here, for example, let's say I'm zoomed in. I'm walking into a meeting. We're talking about these three offices here, and I just want to get them out. I like the way that they're highlighted. And they're all labeled properly, and I want to be able to, to get that out to a Word file. You can click on this. Export what you see is what you get. When you do that, it does uh, prompt you. Are you sure? And essentially will create you a Word file, down, asks you to download it, and then it exports it out to that corresponding Word file. So there we go. So it just does a, essentially a uh, snap for you, puts it in a Word file. It's just an image. Now you can copy and paste it to wherever you need to go, uh, into a PowerPoint, into a, a meeting, into an email, whatever it's going to be, and at least gets it out of the software with that, uh, that highlight. Again, if you have a highlight, it's different highlights or different text, you can play with the text, play with your highlights inside there, until, and then zoom in, and it has all those characteristics that it grabs on you, and then puts it into a Word file. So again, nice little feature. Uh, again, export to Word. Generate docx of floors in location list. Pretty self-explanatory. So I want to be able to go and be able to create a Word file uh, of all the floors that are in my list inside of here. So it takes all the floors and be able to create a Word file out of them. It'll actually go and be able to um, generate that, drop all your floor plans in for all the floors as well. So if you have your uh, floor plans published for that entire building, it'll actually go and fetch all those uh, for you and drop them into the report. So here, for example, uh, you can come and see all your different floor plans with all your highlights accordingly. So therefore, it exports it out to a Word file. It's just a basic Word file, and as you can see, it comes out. So that's a nice little feature. Again, just next page on every single uh, floor that comes out uh, from your floor list. So here you've got your entire list, and it exports all those items. That's what that one does. Same thing, uh, except in PDF. Uh, Archivus is now starting to introduce PDF into uh, the product, and these are one of the locations where it'll actually create the PDF instead of the Word file for you. So again, just different option uh, inside that um, pull-down menu. Last but not least uh, is ad hoc PDF report. Well, as you're exporting the information out to this Word file, you'll notice maybe the text is really small, or you want to be able to manipulate the drawing or have some characteristics that you want to be able to change. So this is where you can go and generate an ad hoc report. So let's take a look at that. As I click on that, it comes up with a dialog box, gives you some values or some variables in which you can play with before you export out uh, into a uh, PDF format. So things you can change. Use a consistent scale. This is uh, if you have, for example, do you want to do a zoom extents on every single drawing, or do you want to be able to, to have the drawings all the same size? This may be relative if you're actually putting it onto um, a piece of paper and measuring it with a, a measurement tool, and you want all the drawings to be the same size, or relatively the same size, uh, and same scale factor. So that's available to you. Use the publish text uh, for label text. Do you want to actually use the out-of-the-box uh, value, or do you want to use a preset value? The default is three by nature. Uh, that's just a, a drafting uh, practice. This is in points, so if you actually want to be able to change the point size, you can do so. If you find the text is too small, you want to make it bigger, maybe you want to make it double the size, again, put a value inside there uh, in order to control that. So that's a nice little feature uh, which controls the text size inside that PDF. Legend shading color, you can actually come and be able to set a color if you want to. Uh, so again, that is the alternating color from uh, the one record to the next record in the legend, and you want to change it. I'm going to change it here to something drastic, maybe like a, uh, a yellow or something, so you can really see the change. But essentially, it'll go uh, white, yellow, white, yellow in your legend. So again, you can specify that color. Print using print just using the current drawing. Do I just want the current drawing that I currently have open? If so, then click on yes, and it just does that one. Or no, print me out all the drawings that are in my filtered list over here on the left-hand side. So again, what are you printing? What are you trying to print? 
Lastly, but not least, legend hatch block size. So this is dealing with our legend that we have. So right now, most of our mine are colors, but if you are using a hatch instead of a color, uh, you want to be able to control that size of hatch. Again, is it too small for you? You need to make it bigger or vice versa, depending on what type of hatch you have. That's an example of some of the features. Then you hit generate down in the bottom right hand corner and it goes off and generates based on the criteria in which you filled in a nice pretty PDF. So let's go take a look at that. So it creates my PDF. I'd be able to select on it and it loads up my PDF inside there. So again, as I flip down to something that has a little more data, there's a good example where my text size is a little bit bigger. It's a little bit more legible at this point in time. Maybe it's overlapping just a slight bit, so I may want to shrink that down just ever so slightly. Uh, and my legend down below, up top, again, cycles to my different colors. Uh, again, you can choose a better color than yellow, but I just wanted to see uh, showcase very drastic change uh, inside that. So again, uh, as I page down, it goes through each one of my different floors that's in my floor list, and that's the idea behind it. So again, some edit capabilities, some uh, variables in which you, you can change inside of that uh, corresponding uh, ad hoc report generation. All right, so that is essentially the main screen that we have. Uh, the, some of the tools that are available to you. Before we come off the screen into occupancy, there is one feature in which you can do inside of here uh, that is kind of uh, hidden. But essentially what you can do is you can actually click on a room or mouse over a room and get the information. So here, for example, as I mouse over, you get a little flyout, just like most of the, uh, the product. But as I click on a room, it actually goes and highlights or indicates it highlighted or selected uh, via this hatch around the outside. And it actually comes up and tells you what room it is up across the top and how much area. So as I click on different rooms inside of here, it adds that area up. So that's a really nice feature. Again, if you're trying to click on the area, try to figure out how many, uh, how much area does that three rooms occupy. Click on the three rooms, and then it gives you uh, the total square footage. Nice, uh, clean uh, way of getting your areas really quickly on selected rooms. Well, just to the right of that, there's also view and edit selected rooms. So as I click on that button, it's a pop-up dialog box. And in the pop-up dialog box, this allows me to do a couple of different things. Here, I can come inside of here and be able to check mark on a room and edit that room uh, right from here. Again, it's the same thing as going to my rooms tab and selecting it uh, and be able to hit the edit and edit there. So that's not any different. But what I can do here is I can actually select more than one room and change many pieces of information at the same time, uh, which is really nice. Uh, that gives you the availability if they're all offices down around the outside, select all the rooms and switch them all to offices. That's a great way of doing it. Again, this kind of mimics the, the assigned functionality, very similar to that assign, which is essentially granting and selecting many rooms at the same time. Inside of here, another op option, which is really nice, is there's an export option inside of here. So there's export to a Word and export to Excel. So what you can do, which is really nice, you can select many different rooms and then export them to an Excel file. So if you're just dealing with a very particular set, rather than trying to come up with a complex filter in order to, to narrow it down, uh, you can actually just, just literally select the rooms, come inside of the selected rooms, and export to Excel, send it off via email, and there you go. So that's a quick way of being able to select your rooms, get them out via the Space Console uh, on that option. As well, while we're here, uh, there's actually an Employees tab. I don't have any employees in any one of the rooms. If I did, uh, you'd be able to see them listed here. So again, uh, it does look them up and makes the correlation between the rooms that you've selected and if there's employees in that room or not. I'm going to close that down. Again, I can clear them out. I can deselect a room by actually just physically clicking on it a second time, or I can hit the clear button and it clears out all my selection criteria. So that's a really nice little feature. Uh, and again, I can edit many rooms at the same time very quickly with that functionality. All right, well, let's flip over to the occupancy tab now. So now I can actually flip the occupancy tab. So I click on the occupancy at the top. What this will do is it actually flips out down below the bottom tab, uh, our asset tab, to an employee asset tab. And that employee asset tab gives me a list of my employees based on my filter that I have. So here I've got a filter of all employees from HQ, and that's what it's giving, giving to me. So it tells me that I've restricted to HQ. If you want to turn off that restriction and see them all, you can change that by selecting and deselecting. 
If you want to see just the unassigned ones, i.e., which ones are not been assigned, well, obviously you have to click off restrict HQ because if they're assigned to HQ, then they're not unassigned. So you'd have to check mark that off. Here I can see that there's a location list. So I've got Joan. I don't have Joan in a room yet, and I may want to put her in a room, and that's the way you'd be able to find that uh, that employee. So again, those two check marks are very relative depending on what you're trying to do or what you're trying to accomplish inside the, the product. So some of the other capabilities that we can do, if we're looking for Allison, I can literally just click on Allison. It'll call up the floor plan for Allison and be able to highlight her. So there I see Allison and where she's located, uh, and it highlights them for you. So again, it's just basic selection. There's an edit button here. So again, edit capability of our employee list. Uh, here I'd be able to click edit, and I go to the edit screen for that employee. So again, just your basic edit, edit screen. You've got your building floor and room inside of here. You can change it right to the raw data if you want to, or use some of the other tools. So that's available to you. There is a delete function here. Again, cascading deletes are, um, uh, are applicable inside the Space Console, so just be aware of that. Cancel. Other capabilities that we have inside of here, there's obviously an Add New. Uh, that Add New allows us to add a new employee, again, uh, if we have access rights. There's an export here, export to a Word file or export to Excel. So export the entire list uh, to that. Again, be careful on how many records you have. So I've got 84, so it'll be uh, not too bad. And then we've got a select fields dialog box. Same criteria as we had before in the other um, panel. Uh, so if I want to add, for example, maybe I, I like the first name and last name or employee standard, I can add those items in, move them up to where I want to see them in the list and be able to update them. So again, maybe relative if you have data or if you don't, uh, again, select value and be able to control that. Down below, uh, there is essentially a couple of these gray items that are uh, the action buttons which are um, hidden. So what, how do we unhide them? So essentially what you have the capability of doing is being able to take Allison and maybe we're going to move Allison to another location. So here we've got a floor plan. I've got a room a 121 empty probably. So she's going to move from there to that location. Now in order to do that, you could just go and edit her uh, and then move her via the edit screen. Or you can actually check mark her on and be able to put her into a, a waiting room or unassign her. So in order to unassign her, you can actually check mark it on and hit the unassign a button, which now becomes available to you. That will remove her location currently. So let's try that. Are you sure? Yes. Now she's gone. She's gone off the screen. Why is she gone off the screen? Because it's just restricted to the HQ. So if I want to get her back, I have to unclick that, and I should be able to see her in the list at that point in time. All right, let's see if we can find her. And there's Allison right there. So she doesn't have a location anymore, uh, and I want to be able to assign her a location. So how do I do that? I can check mark her on and go place in waiting room. And what that will do is take her name and put her inside this little dialog box. It's a little flyout. And what that allows you to do is be able to take her name and interact with the drawing and place her into a drawing. So how do we do that? So if I take Allison, I can literally drag her name and drop her into room 121. So as you can see, drag and drop capability, and it temporarily lays that out. So therefore now I can see that I've got a commitment or a pending assignment that's waiting and I need to commit it, and I can do that. Once I hit this commit button, essentially now Allison is in that new room, and you can see it has assigned her to that new room at that point in time. So that could be very handy. Again, if you're having a, a floor reorg or you've got a, a move that happens and you've reorganization half the floor, you can find the people on the floor, unassign them to that floor, move them all into the waiting room, and then just drag them into whatever space you want to. Once you're happy with the layout, hit commit, and you've now committed. So that just gives you the availability in order to be able to uh, go ahead and drag drop via a drawing uh, inside of the uh, space console. Another thing we can do is we can actually physically click on a room just like we did before uh, and be able to select different rooms. Again, same criteria that we had before. There's also a view and edit. As we come up with a view and edit, we should now have employees in our employees tab and I do. So therefore I can come inside of here, take Bruce, and I can alter Bruce's information right from here. Or if we know that they are both coming in inside of here, and being able to 
um, move to the same room, I can check mark two of them on at the same time and be able to move them both to the same room. Uh, that's an, a nice feature uh, if you're moving many people at the same time. Another item again is we have the export to Excel and export to Docs. So you can actually select five, six, seven rooms and then be able to export them with the information of that employee. So that's a nice little feature. Uh, again, don't forget about that uh, inside that selected rooms and employees. That's where that is. Again, deselect either select the room again or hit the clear button, which deselects that room. So that's advantageous for you. Again, if you're also wondering about uh, occupancy, you may turn the occupancy of highlight functionality on as you're dragging and dropping uh, to see what is the occupiable area. Are you overloaded on a certain room? You don't want to be dragging people uh, into a particular room that is over capacity or at capacity. So as we move somebody into it, is that room still have availability? So here I've got room 104. There's probably two workstations inside of there because I can see Bruce is already in there. And that probably has a capacity of two. So I can drag another employee into that room uh, before it exceeds the capacity, or before it's at capacity at that point in time. So that's a nice little feature. Again, use your highlights to your advantage. Uh, so you can use those at any point in given time as you're interacting with the space console to help you out, to speed up your business process, make you more efficient uh, so you're not overloading rooms as part of that workflow. So that's nice uh, in that sort of feature. Uh, in order to uh, be able to deal with that. So again, select capabilities uh, and being able to uh, perform that action as well. So that's some of the capability of that uh, space console between the space and the occupancy tab. There's lots of features in which you can have access to by flipping through the different tabs uh, and be able to interact with it. So as you can see, uh, the one-stop shop, uh, you can do quite a bit inside of here right from your uh, console. I never left it uh, at any point in given time to go backfill background data or to go and alter room information. You can do it all in this screen. As well as there's a nice reporting capability. We're able to export to a Word file, export to a uh, Excel file, and export to PDF. So a lot of capability uh, inside there, as well as getting our drawings out to a report. So again, has that capability. So that's the Space Console in a nutshell, uh, and, and that's the capability, and that's where it's located as part of the Archibus product. All right, there's one thing I'd like to revisit that I'd said to come back to, and that is security group concepts. So diving in inside the Space Console, one thing we took a look at was that Add New button, and we want to be able to restrict on who has access to that Add New. Essentially, what we can do inside of Archibus is restrict down uh, to an end user on what they have access to inside that sp uh, Space Console. So let's take a look at that. So inside the System Administration section, inside the User and Security, Assign Security Groups to Roles is the focus. So inside of here, you can have a basic role. So let's say, for example, I've got a space role, and that space role, I've got a reporting manager. And I want to grant that reporting manager access to that space console. So again, you can take that navigation and put it inside of uh, something that's inside their role, a process that's inside their role that they have access to, and they can open the, and they can have access to it. When they open it up, if, for example, they have something very simple, simple uh, in their assignments of security groups. In this example, I've got the reporting manager, which just has a calculated security group. When that person or that reporting manager logs in, they will not have access to edit uh, inside that space console. It is turned off by nature. If you did want to be able to add access to a user for that, you'd have to come inside of here, add new, and come inside of here and add a security group that Archibus has embedded out of the box inside the product called Space Console All Access. That Space Console All Access allows uh, that corresponding role in order to access all the add new and all the edit functionality. Now, I'm not going to do it for this user, but essentially you'd click on that and be able to hit save at that point in time, and that will add that in and th to that capability to that role. So I want to showcase, for example, what it looks like turned off, because we've already seen what it looks like turned on. So let's go log in as a space reporting manager. So I have one set up, so let's go try it out. So I'm actually going to log in as a, a new user. So I've got a new user, Jay Smith, John Smith. 
and we're going to sign into that new user. That person may only have access to the space inventory, and they have access to that space console. So again, depending on what restriction and capability, uh, what navigation system they have access to. When they open it, again, whichever method that you get to it, uh, you'll notice as I open it up uh, that the add new has been grayed out at this point in time. So they don't have edit capability to add new uh, concepts or new items inside of here. The add news are all grayed out. The other thing, you, if you look really closely, you'll notice that there is no assign function. There's no edit button inside of here. There's no little pencil inside of here. So they can't go and make changes. Uh, so therefore, that is the same for categories. That's the same for rooms. There's no edit capability inside of here. So it's a nice way to make it read only. So the space console is essentially read only at this point in time for this user until you grant that security group to that role. Once you do that, then it opens up the capability of everybody assigned to that role to have edit capability. So therefore, you can control it. And I just wanted to make you guys aware of that that is something that is embedded there out of the box. So again, the security group is called Space Console All Access. And that's the important item that you have to take away with it. All right, hopefully that helps uh, in, in controlling who has access uh, to create new records as part of that Space Console. So that is essentially the Space Console, where it's located, the use and functionality of that Space Console. So hopefully that will help you out in managing your space inside of Archibus uh, in, in order to be able to view all your information on one screen uh, and interact with it very, very quickly and very efficiently. So that's all for this session. So thanks for watching this video in the video series by Horizon. Watch for the next video, and thanks for listening. Take care. Bye for now.